The story starts with Toya Mochizuki. He died in an accident caused by God. The God apologized to Toya for throwing lightning to the earth and accidentally killing him. Toya couldn't believe that he died at the age of 15, but he took the bad news very calmly. He asked God what was going to happen to him now. God offered Toya to be reborn again in another world. Toya immediately agreed to his reincarnation and God wanted to grant him one wish as compensation. Toya then asked if he could take his phone to the other world, but realized that he couldn't charge it. So God allowed him and Toya learned that in the other world, he could charge his phone with magic. Toya was happy to take his phone, but he thought that his phone was useless. So God explained that he can use anything like in his old life, except calling people in his old world. After that, Toya was sent to another world, and he immediately received a call from God. God wanted to let him know that he could use Google Maps in the new world, and everything was adjusted. So Toya was able to find the nearest town with his phone, but he realized that he didn't have any money to buy food and drinks. As he was thinking about how to get money, suddenly a carriage stopped in front of him. From it, a man got out and he wanted to buy Toya's clothes. Toya was then allowed to ride into town with him in the carriage, and he found out that the man had a fashion shop. Toya got new clothes and the fashion retailer also wanted to buy Toya's underwear. Toya got a lot of gold coins for his school suit, and he asked the fashion retailer if he knew a good inn. The merchant recommended the Silver Moon Inn, and Toya used his maps to reach there. Suddenly Toya heard voices, that someone was in trouble. Meanwhile, we see two girls being threatened. The guys wanted to scam the twins and Toya wanted to help the girls. Suddenly the guys attacked Toya, but he got the power of Riz so he couldn't lose and Toya defeated the criminals easily. Then Toya paid the two girls with a gold coin for their discomfort. They were very grateful and introduced themselves as Elze and Linze. Toya introduced himself too, and the girls thought he was from another place called Ishin. Toya found out that the two girls were also living in the Silver Moon Inn, and they showed him the way back. When they arrived at the inn, the innkeeper Micah teased Elze and asked her if they two got a boyfriend. Then Toya learned from Elze that the two twins had an order to transport the item, and the guys tried to scam them. Linze said that she was against the idea of taking such a job from the start, and Elze said that next time they better take jobs from the guild. Toya overheard them and asked if he could accompany them when they went to the guild. The two twins agreed to show Toya the guild, and he thanked them. During the night, he looked at what was happening in his old world. After that, he went to sleep. The next day, Toya accompanied the girls to the guild, and he couldn't read the New World's writing at all. So he looked at the two girls, and they wanted to know if he had already decided on a job. Toya confessed that he couldn't read at all, which surprised the two girls. Lindsay then reads an assignment, and the two girls decide to carry out a quest together. Toya then bought a sword, and he also signed up as an adventurer. After that, Toya and the twins fought against strong wolves. Toya saw fire magic for the first time and was amazed by Lindsay. Toya and his friends managed to complete their first assignment with ease. They were only supposed to defeat five unicorn wolves, and they brought six horns to the guild. Toya wanted to keep one of the horns as a souvenir for his first job. Then their guild card was stamped with magic, and they got their reward. Later, they had tea together, and Toya asked Elze and Linze if they could teach him to read and write. Also, Toya asked if they could still teach him magic. Linze then explained that people without affinity cannot cast spells. Toya didn't understand everything, but he was sure that he had received a high affinity from God. Toya asked if they had a way to find out about the affinity for magic. So he was shown the magic crystal with which one can strengthen magical energy. Linze then showed him how to use the magic stone and creates water. Then Elze explained that everyone has a different affinity, and Toya wanted to test his affinity. He used a magic crystal and a large amount of water appeared. Toya tested all magic stones and all magic stones he used reacted to him. Mastering all elements, Toya learned that Linze was mastering only three elements, and there had never been anyone who had six affinities. Then Toya discovered another magic stone and learned about null magic. Toya tested it to see if he could use null magic. So he said the words gate and created a portal. They then noted that Toya could use words to create a portal to a place he'd visited before. So they found out that Toya has all seven affinities and Toya was surprised that God made him overpowered. Then Micah showed up and introduced them to Isle, who was looking for a new dish for her cafe. They asked if Toya and his friends had any ideas. The twins had no idea but Toya told them about ice cream, much to their confusion. Toya then used his phone and the two girls were curious. Toya said that it is a device only he can use and he sought out the ingredients for ice cream. Then they got all the ingredients and made delicious ice cream. They all loved Toya's dessert and Isle thanked Toya for his recipe. In the morning, Toya started an assignment and he took a picture of Elze sleeping also. His group was going to deliver a letter to the capital. Toya then asked the twins why they didn't take the quest to fight against Omega Slime. The two twins said they hated slimes. Toya learned that slime monsters could decompose women's clothing and he visualized how it would look like. After that, Toya's group wanted to eat lunch. 
Suddenly, they spotted a samurai girl fighting main criminals. Toya supported the samurai girl and defeated all the criminals. Before they got into trouble, they ran to a small alley and took the girl with them. Toya learned that the rescued girl's name is Yahei, and she is from the country of Ishin. Toya and his friends invited the samurai girl to lunch. She said that she was on a training trip and her next destination was the king's capital. Toya's group also planned to travel to the capital, so Elze asked if she would like to travel to the capital together. They then drove to the capital together in a carriage. Meanwhile, Toya learned a spell to draw distant objects into his hands, so he tested the new spell and managed to get Yahei's hairband. Lindsay noted that it was a useful spell, but he could have done nasty things with it too. Elze and Lindsay said that Toya isn't allowed to commit crimes with his spell, so he said that he would also use his newfound magic to steal girls' panties. After that, he tested another spell that expanded his senses. As a result, Toya could smell something suspicious far away. Toya smelled blood and they discovered that people were being attacked by evil monsters. Toya and his friends immediately fought the monsters, and Yahei tripped over a rock. A monster appeared and Toya used a spell to save her. Suddenly, a monster tried to sneakily attack Toya, and he was rescued by Lindsay. More and more monsters appeared, and the summoner was discovered by Toya, who used his spell named Slit to incapacitate the guy. Suddenly, a little girl called for help because her servant was injured. Toya used his null magic and was able to remove the arrow. Also, Toya healed the servant named Lime. Afterward, Toya's group learned that the little girl was the duke's daughter, named Sushi. She said that she was the majesty's niece, and also they didn't have to talk so politely with her. Then Lime wanted to hire Toya's group as an escort, and also reward them after they arrived in the capital. So Toya escorted them to their estate in the capital of the kingdom. Sushi's father was happy that his daughter was unharmed and thanked Toya for saving her life. Then Toya learned from Duke Alfred that his wife fell ill five years ago and she went blind as a result. Also, the Duke said that Sushi was on a journey to find a magician who could cure his wife's illness. Unfortunately, they didn't find a person who could use the appropriate null magic. Suddenly, the friends of Toya realized that Toya could cure the illness of Sushi's mother. So Toya copied his zero magic that cured any disease. After that, Ellen was able to see her family again and was cured of her illness. As a result, the Duke rewarded Toya with 40 platinum coins, shocking Toya. In addition, Albert gifted Toya four coins with the symbol of the royal family. So Toya ended his assignment in the capital and Yahei wanted to continue traveling with him. A few days later, Toya discovered a crying girl named Arma. She told him that she was separated from her friends. Toya showed her his phone and he used maps to find her big sister, Olga. After that, Toya's group split up to buy supplies for their journey. The next day, two men were playing Shaji whose board was created by Toya. After that, Elze and Yahei showed up with a big bag full of desserts. So Toya teleported himself to the Duke's mansion and gifted him with some desserts. Also, Toya showed Duke Albert the game of Shaji. Sushi was angry because she wanted to play too, but her father said her turn would come later. As a result, she teased Toya and tickled him. Then Toya played Shoji with the Duke until late at night, because Albert also became addicted to the game. The next day, Toya showed the quest about the Mega Slimes and the girls refused immediately. They said they hate slimy and sticky things. Meanwhile, Toya imagined the slimes removing the girls' clothes. Later, we see Toya's group in a ruin fighting at Dark Knight. Yahei and Elze's teamwork was perfect, and they managed to overpower the knight. In the end, Toya attacked and they defeated the knight together as a team. After defeating the monster, Toya used his search spell, and he could sense a historical treasure under a rock. Lindsay used an explosion spell and destroyed the huge rocks. They found an underground entrance that led to a cave. Elze and Yahe were afraid of ghosts, and they hid behind Toya. As they walked on, they saw ancient writing and Toya decided to take a picture with his phone startling the two girls. Then he photographed the stone wall and Elze discovered an earth magic stone. Toya wanted to perform magic in the stone and the girls made a safe distance from Toya. As the earth stone absorbed magic, a secret door opened to a mysterious statue. Toya looked at it and noticed that the statue was made of glass. Suddenly, Lindsay's light magic faded. They all noticed Lindsay's magic being absorbed. Then the glass statue transformed into a crystal bug. The cave collapsed and Toya used a portal to escape with his friends. After that, the monster tried to hunt Toya and his friends. So Lindsay attacked with fire magic, but it was absorbed by the monster. Yahei then attacked with her sword, but the shell was too hard. Elze also tried to destroy the monster's skin, but they had no chance. The girls didn't know what to do anymore and Toya used a spell to throw the monster away. It was then attacked with ice magic and the twins attacked together. The monster regenerated himself and immediately injured Elze. Toya instantly healed Elze while the monster was distracted by Lindsay and Yahe. After that, Toya stole the crystal from the monster with a spell, and Elze was able to destroy the monster's core with a single punch, defeating it. 
After that, Albert learned about the mysterious monsters of the kingdom ruins. He couldn't believe everything, and Toya also showed him pictures of the writings in the ruins. In the evening, they returned to the inn, and Toya used drawing magic to produce copies of his photos. The next day, he teleports back to Duke Albert's estate. Suddenly, Toya learned that the king had been poisoned, and Albert asked Toya to cure the illness of his brother. Toya was on the way to the king's palace with Duke Albert, and he learned that the king was most likely poisoned by nobles who wished to marry the princess to become the next monarch of the kingdom. Albert wanted Toya to use his spell recovery to heal the king and save his life. When Toya and Albert arrived at his brother's castle, they were told by an arrogant noble that the assassin had been caught. Then the king's daughter cried and Albert opened the door to the king's bedroom. Toya then used his recovery spell on the king. Toya was able to save the king's life and Albert introduced Toya to his brother. The king thanked him for his help, and the king's daughter Yumina immediately fell in love with Toya. But Toya was into older women and he got nervous around the pretty Charlotte, who was a court mage to the king. After that, Albert and his brother wanted to find out who had poisoned him. General Leon said the king passed out after drinking wine during lunch. Toya had a hunch as to how the king was poisoned. The king then wanted to speak to the ambassador. When Ambassador Olga appeared, Toya immediately noticed that they knew each other. Toya suspected that Olga wasn't the assassin who poisoned the king. So Toya wanted to see the crime scene, and he used his search spell to find the poison. Toya knew immediately how the king was poisoned, and he also called the suspect to him. Everyone gathered at the crime scene, and Count Balsa was called. He couldn't believe the king was still alive. However, Toya said that the culprit was among the people in the room. Count Balsa tried to blame Olga for the poisoning and said that Olga's wine was poisoned. Toya then showed a new bottle of wine. General Leon drank it and he confirmed that there was no poison in it. Then Toya poured the wine into his majesty's glass and asked Count Balsa to drink it. He refused to drink the wine and Leon forced him to drink from the glass. As he drank the wine, he thought he was dying. Toya was able to prove that the poison was in the glass. Count Balsa was the culprit and Toya caught Count Balsa from running away. Then the king thanked Toya again and Yumina suddenly stood up. She told her parents that she had decided to marry Toya. Toya couldn't believe it and didn't know what was going on. Toya said that he couldn't get married yet and that her family didn't know him. The king said that Yumina had magical eyes and could see the true character of each person. Toya said that he and Yumina were way too young to get married. The king said that the king's family usually gets married by the age of 15. Toya had no more arguments to present so he was engaged to Yumina. Later, God calls Toya on his phone congratulating him on his engagement with the princess. The next day, the other girls found out about his engagement to the princess. Everyone was jealous, and Yumina introduced herself to the girls. They also learned that Yumina would like to go on adventures with Toya in the future. Later on, Toya and his girls were on their way to an assignment. Yumina wanted to show Toya that she was not useless and summon powerful wolves. Toya was impressed by the summoning magic, and the wolves attracted monsters. Then Yumina eliminated monsters with her bow. After their fight, Toya was worried since his group was made up of only girls. He said that he's afraid people will talk bad about him because he only has pretty girls in his group. The girls blushed when they heard Toya call them pretty. After that, they returned to the city and Toya used summoning magic to summon a white tiger. Yumina said that the white monarch was among the highest ranking monsters. For Toya to make a pact with the white tiger, Toya had to prove his strength. He then showed the white monarch his magic powers and the tiger fell over. So the white monarch accepted Toya as his ruler. Toya then named the tiger Kohaku. Toya said that his form as a giant white tiger would cause him problems with other people in the town, and so he turned him into a cute little kitten. Later, Toya and his friends were assigned to investigate a castle that had many slimes. The girls were all depressed because they hated sticky slimes. Toya looked forward to the assignment, as he would like to see if the slimes decomposed the girls' clothes. Then the group searched around the castle to find information about a slime explorer. When they looked in the basement, they found green slimes. Lindsay wanted to burn the slimes, but Toya stopped her because she would destroy the whole castle with his fire magic. Following this, the slimes approached them and Toya noticed that the slimes were bound to certain places. When Toya and his friends wanted to go upstairs, more slimes appeared. Toya learned that the white slimes produced lotion which was harmless. Although they all slipped, Kohaku helped Toya and saved him. The girls were all below and being attacked by the green slimes. The slimes decomposed the girls' clothes. Toya rescued his friends and used gate to teleport them. Then Toya saw the half-naked girls and started staring at them. Toya blushed and he was slapped by Elze. After that, they continued to look around the castle, and they discovered strange statues. On the statues, they found some slimes attached to women's chests. The slimes jumped onto Yumina, and she instantly defeated them. After that, Toya found the secret room of the Slime Explorer. He discovered a book from the dead Slime Explorer. Toya was reading his diary, and the Slime Explorer wrote that he made his dream true with the slimes. 
Then the slimes appear and transform into Toya's naked friends. Toya was looking at the naked bodies and the girls tried to cover his eyes. In the end, the girls burned down the castle and destroyed everything. The next day, Toya is seen walking around town with Kohaku. They saw that Yahe had found a lost little child. Kohaku learned that the girl's name was Lim and Toya found her mother with his phone. When the girl was reunited with her mother, Yahe wanted to know how he could find the mother with his phone. She learned that by using the search spell and combining it with his cell phone, Toya could find anyone if he knew their name and appearance. Later, Toya is seen in his room combining a spell with his phone. Toya could see through the wall with his phone and watch Lindsay who was in her underwear. When Lindsay was dressed, she sought out Toya to learn new spells. Unfortunately, the spells were written in ancient writing that she couldn't read. Toya created glasses that automatically translate the writing. Lindsay immediately asked Toya to help her with it. Lindsay failed to cast the new spell and fell over from exhaustion. Toya then creates a spell, and when she runs out of magic, Toya transfers some of his magic power to her body. Lindsay thanked Toya and continued to learn the new spell. Unfortunately, it failed again and Toya gave her some advice. Following that, she managed to learn the bubble bomb spell. Later, while walking, Toya saw Elze admiring a dress. Toya took her into the store and bought the dress and gave it to her as a present. When Elze told the other girls about the gift, the other girls all wanted Toya to buy them a dress too. Then they received a letter and Toya learned that he would get a title of nobility. The next day, Toya looked at his new estate. He couldn't believe that he got a huge estate instead of a knighthood. Toya said that living in a house with five people is a lot of work and the girls were surprised that Toya wanted to share the huge mansion with them. They thought that Toya planned to stay in his new house only with Yumina because it was a gift from her father. The girls didn't want to be rude, so Toya said that he loves all four of them equally, and they are all like family to him. The girls blushed when Toya said he loved them all, and suddenly everyone wanted to look around the mansion. Toya didn't notice that all the girls had a crush on him. Yumin understood why the girls were all nervous, and said that she likes to share Toya with the other girls. After that, we see Toya playing with Kohaku in his new garden. Then the girls showed up and the girls asked if he really was sure to stay with them in the huge mansion. Toya replied that he would be honored to have them with him. In addition, Toya had to promise the girls to treat everyone equally and not to favor anyone. Later, servants showed up to take care of and clean Toya's huge mansion. The butler Lime introduced Toya to the new servants and Toya learned that Lime was the king's former butler. He was happy to serve his brother's savior. Toya learned that he is the older brother of Sushi's butler, also known as Lime. Toya was then informed that Duke Albert and Sushi had come to visit. Sushi said that she was surprised when she heard about Yumina and Toya's engagement. Then Duke Albert said he was also considering Toya marrying his daughter. Toya managed to avoid the subject, and the Duke told him about his request. He wanted to ask for Toya's help to create an alliance between the Kingdom of Belfast and the Kingdom of Miss Mead. The next day, Toya made his way to the Kingdom of Miss Mead. He met a group of knights who escorted Toya and his friends. When it got dark, Toya and his group rested around the campfire. Suddenly, a comrade noticed that bandits were nearby. So Toya showed his phone and he was able to track the bandits' locations. Toya tested a new spell and he was able to attack all bandits with his phone. The knights were then able to arrest all of the bandits. Toya saw that Knight Leon had a crush on Olga. The other girls also watched and they discussed whether Olga noticed Leon's feelings. Also, they said that Olga doesn't seem as dense as a certain someone. Toya didn't understand that the girls were talking about him. When they got to the next town, Toya spotted Leon looking for jewelry. Leon said he wanted to buy a present for his mother, but Toya knew it was meant to be a present for Olga. Toya then bought Arma a gift, and he asked her what her big sister Olga had chosen. As a result, Leon finds out that Olga likes flowers. After that, they sail to another city, and Lindsay got seasick. So Toya gave her a piggyback ride, much to her delight. As they continued, Kohaku sensed someone was watching them. Later, Toya suggested to set up a camp before the night fell. Olda said that there were many monsters in the woods and Toya said that Kohaku could protect everyone. When the night fell, a dragon suddenly appeared. Toya learned that the dragons were behaving strangely and that they lived in the center of the kingdom of Belfus. Toya found out that the dragon was flying towards a small village. So the group split up to evacuate the villagers and Toya used Kohaku to lure the dragon away from the city. Then Kohaku got angry as the dragon threatened Toya he was surprised that Kohaku could understand the dragon's language. Toya used a powerful attack and shot the dragon down from the sky. Then, Linze cut off his wings. Suddenly, the dragon attacked, but Toya protected Linze. Then the other girls attacked the dragon too. The dragon had very strong skin, but it was injured by an unknown throwing knife. Toya's group surrounded the dragon and combined powerful spells to defeat it. Suddenly, another dragon appeared. He was able to speak the human language and apologized to Toya for causing trouble for his comrade. They then put out the fire in the village and cared for the wounded until the next morning. 
Toya donated all the materials of the dragon to the villagers, so they could recover their village. The mayor of the village thanked Toya and wanted him to get the dragon's tooth. Toya learned that he could use the tooth to create a powerful weapon. In addition, the mayor gave him back the knife, thinking it belonged to him. Toya didn't recognize the knife. Afterward, in the carriage, Toya asked Kohaku if there were other people near the dragon. Kohaku said that two people were hiding in the trees. Later, they arrived at the capital of Miss Mead. Then they met King Jamuka and Yumina introduced herself as the princess of Belfast Kingdom. She said that she wanted to personally deliver a message from her father requesting an alliance with the Miss Mead Kingdom. Then King Jamuka got curious about Toya and asked if he would like to fight against him. Toya then learned that King Jamuka is a battle junkie. The king's servants said that Toya should fight the king with his full strength. Then the rules were explained that magic is allowed, but strong attack spells are not tolerated. Toya used his spell slip, and the king lost instantly. The king didn't want to accept defeat without a fight. Then the two fight against each other. The king dodged Toya's attack using null magic, and he used the Axel spell to increase his agility. Toya loved his spell and managed to copy the magic perfectly. Toya combined the boost spell with Axel, and he managed to defeat the king. The king was surprised and pleased with Toya. In the evening night, Leon was looking for Olga, but unfortunately, Toya hadn't seen her yet. Then Toya and Leon spotted the girls, and they were all dressed up nicely. The king then discovered Toya and complimented him on his outfit. Toya's girls also complimented him, and he was flattered. Then he wanted to take a picture of the pretty girls. After that, Toya told the king about his phone with which he could take photos. The king was amazed, and he won a picture of himself too. Toya left the party, and he discovered a mysterious teddy bear. He followed the teddy bear and was led to his mistress. Toya met the leader of the fairy folk named Lean. She knew about him as a dragon slayer. Toya learned that she was over 600 years old. Then Toya inquired about her teddy bear Paula and learned that she is a regular teddy bear who can move through null magic. Lean showed her null magic skill, which allowed her to make things move in a certain way. Toya learned that her spell can't move everything and isn't so powerful. As a result, he wanted to copy her spell and immediately applied the magic. He could immediately mimic Lean's magic, surprising her. Lean couldn't believe Toya was so talented and wanted to make Toya her student. Toya refused and ran to his bedroom. The next morning, Toya met Lindsay and Yumina. He asked his girls to help him create weapons. He opened a portal to the forest and Elze used her magic to cut the dragon's tooth. Then Toya shaped the dragon's tooth into a pistol. He also produced ammunition and used the magic to make the bullets recharge themselves automatically. The girls were fascinated by Toya's gun, and they also wanted a gun. So he made more pistols for Elze and Yumina. The two were happy and Toya added another spell to his weapon. He could also transform his pistol into a sword. After that, they went into town to have dinner. Suddenly, Kohaku felt strangers watching them. Toya wanted to greet them, so he appeared behind the two suspects. The suspects tried to escape from Toya, but he tracked them down with his Google Maps and shot them with rubber bullets. Then they were tied up and Toya wanted to search them for weapons. He grabbed a woman's chest, and he recognized the women. Toya learned that his maids were spies from the kingdom of Belfast, tasked with protecting Yumina. So Toya realized that the two of them only intended to protect Toya's group all the time, and he gave his maids their knife back. After that, the two maids demanded that Toya need to keep their mission a secret. Afterward, the alliance between the two kingdoms was sealed, and Toya returned to the kingdom of Belfast. After his return to the mansion, Toya was greeted by everyone, and the maids thanked Toya for secretly sending the two home first. After that, Toya went to his room with Kohaku, and he wanted to rest and fell asleep. When he woke up after a nap, he wanted to take a bath. The bathroom wasn't locked, and he saw his girls in their underwear. Toya had to apologize to the girls, but he enjoyed the sight of his girls' bodies while being scolded by them. The following day, Toya made bicycle tires, and Duke Albert came to visit him. The Duke got curious and was allowed to ride the bicycle. He immediately fell down and desperately wanted to learn to ride. The girls were also interested in Toya's bicycle. Elze remarked that riding a bike is difficult. Toya taught the girls to ride bicycles, but Yumina could drive it with ease and was praised by Toya. The other girls were jealous and competed with each other. Yahe also wanted to ride, but Elze didn't want to lose her sister, so she didn't share the bike with Yahe. But the two twins competed against each other. Duke Albert showed up, claiming that he was the best bike rider. The twins were distracted and bumped into each other. Then the Duke asked if Toya could also build a bike for his daughter Sushi. So Toya went to town to get the materials. Suddenly, he saw a child who had committed pickpocketing. The child was threatened by criminals, and they wanted to kill the kid with a knife. Toya stepped in and defeated the criminals with rubber bullets. The little boy thanked Toya, and suddenly his stomach growled. Toya offered to buy the little boy some food and learned that the little boy is a girl named Rin. She hadn't eaten anything for three days and was an orphan. Toya wanted to help Rin, and he offered her a good-paying job at his home. 
Rin was happy about his offer to get a home with a good salary. Rin was then employed as a maid and all the girls thought she was very cute. Later, Toya, Yumina, and Sushi meet with Arma who was also shopping. Suddenly, he spotted Leon and Olga who were on a date together. Toya and his friends spied on them as they went into a restaurant. Sushi and Arma were too curious and asked Toya to do something. Toya then used his phone to watch the date of the two lovers. Sushi also wanted to experience a romantic date, but Yumina said that she was too young. Then Olda and Leon left the restaurant and a man bumped into Arma. He apologized and Toya realized that it was King Jamuka. Then they watched Olda and Leon's date together. Then a man was harassed by bandits and Leon wanted to help him. The criminals got angry and threatened him. King Jamuka and Toya attacked the criminals while wearing masks. Leon recognized Toya by his pimp clothes and when Olda appeared, King Jamuka used his axle skill to disappear. Toya helped Leon confess his feelings to Olga, making her blush. Then Toya returned to his home and Paula greeted him. Toya found out that Lean and Charlotte had come to visit him. Lean wanted to talk to Toya about a defeated crystal monster. The beast wiped out an entire village and she wanted Toya to take care of it. In addition, she told him about a legend that demons named Freeze almost destroyed the whole world many years ago, and those demons possessed crystal-like bodies. Lean wanted to use Toya's gate to the village, but Toya replied that he could only teleport to familiar locations. So Lean told Toya about the skill named Recall. With that, he can teleport to other people's familiar locations. Lean wanted to go to Ishin because she wanted to explore the ancient ruins. Toya used the Recall spell with the support of Yahe and he was able to visualize the land of Ishin. After that, they teleported to the forest of Ishin. Yahe showed the group her hometown which was built like traditional Japan. Toya was familiar with the culture, so he impressed Yahe with his knowledge. When Yahe arrived home, her mother greeted her and she found out that her father and brother were on the battlefield to fight against the Takeda clan. She was worried and asked Toya to help her family. Toya uses gate and teleports near the battlefield. He used his phone to find out that her brother was safe, but he couldn't see the location of her father. Toya immediately teleports himself to the battlefield where he sees zombie soldiers. Then Yahe's brother, Yutaro, reported that the zombies can only defeat it by destroying their mask. Toya teleported to the fortress and was met with hostility until Toya opened a gate so Yahe immediately hugged her brother. Toya saw the injured people and cast a spell to heal the injured people. Toya then asked why the enemies were zombies. Ling suspected that a special artifact turned the enemy soldiers into zombies. Toya used his phone and located all the enemies. Using the phone, he cast his powerful Holy Lance spell that killed the enemies all at once. After that, they visited the leader of the Takigawa clan named Ayasu. There they learned that the leader of the Takeda clan had already died and now Yamamoto Kansuki, who possesses an artifact, was responsible for the war. Suddenly, a cute ninja girl named Sabaki appeared who belonged to a general of the Takeda clan. She told them that generals of the Takeda clan were killed or imprisoned by Kansuki. Sabaki offered to help them and Toya trusted her as she looked very cute. During the night, they teleported to the enemy territory and Lean used a skill that can make them invisible. Toya tried to enter the mansion with Gate, but it failed through a barrier. Suddenly, Lean looked at Sabaki's chest and started playing with it. Sabaki thought Toya was playing with her and liked having herself massaged. Toya was very uncomfortable and stopped Lean. After that, they freed all Takeda generals and they wanted to find Kensuki to get revenge. Toya destroyed the barrier and used his Holy Lance spell to defeat the zombie soldiers. Then Kensuki showed up, and as one of the men charged at him, the leader of the Takeda clan defended him. The Takeda servants didn't want to fight against their leader. So Toya used his null magic and stole his magic eye. Lee realized that the stone was cursed and Toya destroyed the artifact with his gun, killing Kansuki as a result. After that, peace returned in Ishin, and Toya learned that the Nuria ruins were near an island on the seabed. Toya said goodbye to Yahe's family, and they teleported to a beach. The girls were amazed by the beautiful view and Toya found the ruins with his phone, but decided to have some fun at the beach with his friends. Toya also invited the royal family and his other friends to the beach. He set up two tents as dressing rooms and the girls put on their bikinis. Yubina and Elze were jealous of the others because they had big chests. Then Toya saw the girls in bikinis and loved the view of their half-naked bodies thinking that he was in paradise. After that, Sushi and Rin also showed up in swimsuits. They were happy to play in the sea and Toya took a picture of them. After that, Lean showed up and a water-repellent spell was cast on Paula to save her from drowning. After that, Toya dove into the sea to explore the ruins, but he couldn't stay underwater long enough. Kohaku had an idea to solve Toya's problem. He told them about the Black Monarch and together they summoned the Black Monarch. The monster recognized Kohaku immediately and looked down on him for serving a weak human. Kohaku was convinced that Toya would also become their master. Then as a condition of making a pact with the monster, Toya had to win against them in a fight. 
Toya agreed to the fight, and he immediately used his slip spell. He created an infinite spell with the spell slip, beating the monster continuously. The Black Monarch couldn't get up and Toya just decided to wait. After a long time, the Black Monarch accepted Toya as their new master, and he named the snake Kokyu and the turtle Sango. The monsters transform into a smaller version of themselves. Then Toya decided to spend some time with his girls. The girls then wanted to know which girl he thinks is the prettiest in a bikini. Toya knew he was in trouble and he replied that Sushi was the prettiest. The girls were afraid that Toya was into little girls and his phone slipped out of his pocket with a photo of Sushi. Toya said it was just a souvenir photo but the girls didn't believe him. Later, they went into the sea together. And they enjoyed the time playing with Toya. In the evening, Toya wanted to explore the ruins with the help of Sango and Kokyu. He discovered a mysterious room and used magic to get teleported into another room full of flowers. Suddenly Francesca appeared. She was the terminal that controlled the aerial garden of Babylon. Toya then asked why she wasn't wearing some panties. Francesca said she got a skirt, and she was hoping Toya would touch her a little bit. After that, she showed him the garden of Babylon. She also told him that the garden was created by Professor Regina Babylon and is a floating island. Suddenly, Sango said that the girl wasn't a human, but an android assembled from biological components and machine parts. Also, she can't give birth, but is capable of intercourse and she's still a virgin. Afterward, Francesca said that she recognized him as suitably compatible. As a result, Toya was named to be her new master. He was chosen because only people with all affinities can activate the portal. Meanwhile, the other girls were playing on the beach, and Yahe spotted a crab. She tried to catch it, and Charlotte tripped. Suddenly, she was hit by a huge wave and the crab went into her huge chest. Lean showed up and Charvelet ran away immediately. Suddenly, Toya opened a portal and showed his girls the Garden of Babylon. Lean said that the room looked similar to the ruins of the ancient Parthenon civilization. Lean noticed the girl next to Toya and asked if Francesca was his new wife. Lindsay was immediately angry and Toya tried to clear up the misunderstanding. Toya explained that she was the owner of the garden but she disagreed, saying the ownership was transferred to her master Toya. She then lied that Toya was her beloved husband, making the girls angry. The girls also found out that Toya had seen their panties. As a result, the girls were shocked and Toya was scolded by Lindsay to be a pervert. She was very jealous and shocked by Toya's fetish for panties. Lean then offered him to see her panties too. Toya refused as he was afraid of Lindsay. Later, as they all went for a walk, Yumina asked if the three girls remembered their conversation. The girls recalled talking about Toya and that they all have a crush on Toya. All the girls blushed when they thought of Toya and Yumin as said that Toya was a special man but she didn't want to be selfish and would share him. She then suggested that all four girls marry Toya and the girls were embarrassed and didn't dare to continue the conversation. So Yumina ended the conversation because the girls weren't sure about their feelings. Back in the present, Yumina asked if they were now aware that they were all in love with Toya. Yumina knew that all three of them always wanted to be near Toya, and they always got nervous by seeing him. Yumin decided that all three girls would marry Toya too, and they all thought about their marriage with him and how their wedding would look like. Meanwhile, Toya talked to Lean about the Garden of Babylon. Lean was intrigued by the garden's story, and Toya said that the professor who created Babylon was a pervert. Lean then learned that several areas like theirs were drifting in the sky. They were being controlled by Francesca's sisters, and Toya was very confused. So Lean explained to him that Babylon was an island that flew everywhere in the world, after that, the other girls showed up, and they learned about the nine floating islands that together form Babylon. They then decide to find the other floating islands, and Toya realizes that his phone can't locate the islands. So his only choice was to find the magic temples like before. Then Lean asked what Toya was planning to do with being Francesca's new master. Toya accepted Francesca, and she wanted to register him as her master. Then she kissed him. All of a sudden, the girls were shocked by Toya and Francesca's passionate French kiss. When the kiss was over, Toya was frozen and blushed. Yumina was angry as she had never kissed him before and Francesca said that was the only option to collect Toya's genetic samples. Suddenly, Lindsay stood up and made a love confession to Toya, followed by a French kiss. In the evening, Toya and his girls returned to their mansion, and Francesca was hired as a maid. Then Toya lay down in his bed as he thought about Lindsay's confession of love and her passionate kiss. Suddenly, Yumina knocked on his door. She wanted to talk with Toya about the kiss. She was angry at Toya, because they were engaged and she hadn't gotten a kiss yet. Toya was surprised that Yumina wasn't angry, because Lindsay made him a love confession, but rather that he had not kissed her yet. She then said that everyone could see that Lindsay had a crush on him and Toya apologized for not noticing her feelings. Then Yumina said that she didn't mind because nobles have normally more than two wives, but now he has to kiss and hug her too. So Toya made amends as he kissed Yumina on the mouth. Yumina was happy about their kiss, and she asked him about his feelings towards Lindsay. 
Toei replied that he thinks Linzei is cute too, but he was unsure of his feelings. Then Linzei appeared. Lin cast her invisibility spell to make her invisible. Linzei overheard their conversation and cried because he didn't answer her confession. Toei then apologized to her and said he loved her too. After that, Yumina suggested that Toei should make Linzei his fiancé as well since it's normal for kings and nobles to have multiple wives. Linzei was happy that the misunderstanding was cleared up and she ended up as Toei's fiancé as well. Toei was surprised and the two won a goodnight kiss. The next morning, Elze showed up and she wanted to talk with Toya outside of their mansion. Yahe was also waiting for him, and the two said they found out about Linzei's engagement. The two girls then challenged Toya to a fight. The loser had to grant the winner a wish. After that, their fight started and Yahe attacked Toya with her samurai sword. She was instantly defeated by the rubber bullets. Meanwhile, Elze attempted to attack Toya, but she was overwhelmed by his immense power. Toya said she could give up, but she refused. Suddenly, Elze said that she and Yahe were also in love with Toya and also Toya was out of ammunition. As a result, Toya lost the fight and the two girls confessed their love to Toya. He was surprised to get more confessions and didn't understand anything. So the two wished that he would marry them both too. However, Yumin explained to him the reason for the fight and Elze wanted an answer to her confession of love. Toya didn't know how to answer and wanted more time to think about their marriage. Then we see Toya in the Garden of Babylon as he tells Francesca his problem. Toya loved all four girls, but he wasn't sure if he could be a good husband for all of his girls. Suddenly, Francesca said that she had a message from Professor Regina. Toya was able to talk to her on his phone. She then made a joke and showed him her panties. Afterward, Regina said that she had a tool to see into the future. She then said that the future is changing every time due to Toya's actions. Finally, the professor gave him some advice and tried to help him with his problem. After that, Toya visited God and Toya told him about his problems. God encouraged him and gave him the same advice as Professor Regina. Toya was still unsure and God called the goddess of love for help. Toya learned that she also looks at Toya's life and she always supports people in love. The goddess of love said he doesn't have to worry too much about it and Toya was encouraged by her. Following this, the goddess of love said that she was responsible for the perverted situations. When Toya got back to his mansion, Kohaku called the girls. Then Toya said that he doesn't want to get married yet. The girls were immediately shocked. But Toya said he's afraid he can't make them happy because he is very young. So Toya promised that he would get engaged to the four of them. But he didn't want to marry now. He said that they needed to get to know each other more and if they didn't lose interest in him in the years to come, he would like to marry all four of them. The girls said they will love him forever and they accepted his decision. As a result, Toya had four fiancés and they all wanted a kiss from him. He wanted to kiss Elze first, but she was too shy and knocked him out. Lean and the others watched out the window and enjoyed the great show. Suddenly, Francesca said that according to the professor, Toya would end up with nine women in his future life. Afterward, Toya goes on a walk in the market and watches a cute guy bargaining with a shopkeeper. Toya helps him out and the guy introduces himself as Ende, and casually remarks that he is interested in Toya's large device inside his pants. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more.